Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Mario Kart Wii Mix. Uh, and today, uh, it is the ninth anniversary of the release of Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and so I figured it was a perfect time to go ahead and sit down and play some not Mario Kart 8. Um, play Mario Kart 8 tracks in VR in Mario Kart Wii, you know, the whole drill at this point. Um, things are going to be a little bit different for this episode compared to the previous ones. Uh, first of all, we're going to be playing as King Boo. Uh, reviewing some of the footage in the last few episodes, it kind of felt like the uh, the reason I was playing as Rosalina was that was always my main back in the day, but I kind of realized that the Luma would sometimes just cut into the footage, and that might have been irritating, so I decided to pick a character that uh, didn't have a floating object around their head and also I don't really care to see because I give absolutely no fucks about King Boo. Um, so at least I'll be looking at characters I like. Um, the second thing that's different is Mario Kart Wii. Or I don't really have all Wii U tracks on here um, because I tried to stick with ones that were of a minimum quality standard um, truthfully, pretty much all of these, well, at least one of these, and we'll get into it later, it's Dolphin Shoals, um, doesn't have this quality, but the rest of them kind of have a, uh, uh, let's play, I want to play Mario Kart 8, but we have Mario Kart 8 at home, and this is Mario Kart 8 at home, um, quality, uh, they're all a little bit janky, um, but beyond that, uh, this is about the only way I can play these tracks in VR, and this is kind of the reason I got into modding this game to begin with. So let's play them. Uh, before we get into it, brief overview of how I feel about Mario Kart 8. Uh, it should come as no surprise if you've seen any other episode, given how many times I compared other games to Mario Kart 8. I love Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, and I loved Mario Kart 8 before 8 Deluxe, but really 8 Deluxe is honestly one of my favorite games of all time at this point, especially with its DLC. Um, I just think it's plays damn near perfectly for how I want a Mario Kart game to play. Um, there's a variety of ways to get builds that handle differently from each other, but they don't handle so differently that they're, like, worthless. And it, it's like riding a bike, that game. Like, I can hop between the vehicles in that game that handle completely differently without a problem because they all just handle well <laughs> um, in some degree. Um, I think being in first is actually fun in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, sure, you get the coin item, but it you, gives sort of like a fun game of like, try to get the coin in your primary slot and a good weapon in your secondary slot so that Abu will only take your coins and not your good items. I feel like there's like a whole mind game going on there. I don't know. It tends to be when I lose my place in first in Mario Kart 8, I can point to some reason that it happened, as opposed to say we were the reason it happened was the game decided to shoot three blue shells in a row in me. Um, really, the only two problems I have with Mario Kart 8 is that obviously the booster pass courses don't look the same as the normal courses. That doesn't bother me too much. It bothered me more when they first released than now. Uh, and I still am more than happy that we got DLC for that game. Um, because more tracks is better. Um, but oh, the other problem, and the only other problem I would really fault the game for, is I feel like the item balance gets rough in the middle of the pack, which is different from every other Mario Kart game. Um, because when they added double items for 8 Deluxe, they didn't really balance the items you were getting in the middle of the pack, and so you get a lot of like rapid use items like the Fire Flower, all that junk. Um, like triple shells and stuff. I think if they reduced a lot of those items to like a single use thing, it would make the game better. Um, but beyond that, uh, I've said since Mario Kart 8 Deluxe release that I'd be perfectly happy with them just keep releasing updates to that game rather than making a new game on the Wii, on the Switch. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, so I have been happy. Um, got that out of the way. The reason I'm talking about this before I get into a track is because I want to talk about the two the tracks that are missing before we get into the tracks that are here. Mario Kart Stadium. Really good uh, starter course. It's got just enough going on that I don't 
think it's boring on replay or as like a higher skill player. Uh, I don't groan when it comes up. Toad Circuit was kind of the first first course in a game where I didn't like groan when it came up in a random selection. And Mario Kart Stadium improves on that course in every single way. Water Park is a really good second course. I feel like it gets shit on a lot. Um, I feel like it's not really all that deserved because it's kind of always how second courses are. Is they're kind of just still like a beginner course, but with an interesting theme. Uh, I like the giant turnaround with the giant sub loop. Uh, I think that course is really fun. I think that course has some really good music that's kind of overlooked. Um, but it's really good music. Uh, I mean, is it my favorite course in the game? No, but I think it gets the job done for what it needs to do. Finally, let's begin with Sweet Sweet Canyon, which is actually here. Um, I think this is the best course in the Mushroom Cup in Mario Kart 8. This version is by the gaming Bram, or Bram, I don't know what, how you say it. Um, who you're probably going to see a lot of in this one. Uh, this particular version of this course uh, could stand to be better, and I feel like it has a lot of the problems that I have with a lot of these. Uh... Actually, well, it's kind of a problem I have with a lot of just custom tracks in Mario Kart Wii in general, and even some of the vanilla tracks in Mario Kart Wii. Um, I don't have that on my head, do I? Nope. Okay. Um which is what I'm going to call the washboard effect. Uh, which you're going to see here. Everything's fine up until right here. And I don't know how much it's going to... Oh, yeah, it's coming across. Um, it's very bumpy. This road is, like, very bumpy. It's less, actually less noticeable in VR because my head is moving rather than when you're playing in 2D. But I call it the washboard effect because it basically just feels like the entire track is a washboard. Basically, there just aren't enough polygons making up the collision in order for the game to have like a smooth road. Also, you always fly right through that uh, balloon in the second lap, which isn't good. Um, but yeah, I'm also not a fan. It doesn't work that bad in this course. This course is fine. Uh, but I'm not a fan of a lot of these attempts to port Mario Kart 8 tracks. Mario Kart Wii that are like try to leave the anti-gravity sections um and I don't know they just end up coming across as weird and often the game camera doesn't really keep up with it well uh I honestly forgot to even try to get another item or use any of my items uh because I was so far ahead um but yeah this course I really like it in Mario Kart 8, uh, it's kind of once again follows that rule that I say is always a rule where like the third course in the Mushroom Cup feels like it's increasing in complexity. This is no exception compared to the first two courses. Uh, the donut shortcut at the end is pretty tricky and interesting. Uh, I like the music. I love, I mean, generally I like the music is going to be a common compliment of all Mario Kart 8 tracks because I think it has an absolutely phenomenal soundtrack. Uh, I'm regretting making King Boo my choice of character instantly because of this constant laughing. Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, one thing I wanted to talk about with Mario Kart 8. I'm sorry I'm talking. I know I'm talking fast. <laughs> it's because this race went a lot faster than I was expecting. Um, I'm trying to just keep less downtime between races. Um, but one thing I really like in Mario Kart 8... One reason I like it so much is I remember of a review back in the day. Let's let's just get into the next race, I guess. Well, so next is Swamp Ruins. Uh, this one I believe is by Squire Turnbull. Yes, but I think it was originally made for I believe Mario Kart Seven. If not, I don't think it was made for DS. Either way, it's technically lower polygon count than you'd normally see for a uh, Wii track. Um, it actually may have been DS now that I'm looking at some of this. Um, but yeah, this uh, what I was going to say is the thing I like about Mario Kart 8, and I remember a review back in the day put it very well. Which is that in Mario Kart 7, they added underwater and gliding. Um, 
but they felt kind of forced. And the way they put it was that anti-gravity is the glue that holds the different mechanics together. And I think that's a really good way to kind of put how a lot of the tracks in this game are designed. Ironically, except this one, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, and that might be why this is actually one of my least favorite uh, non-retro tracks in Mario Kart 8. Um, but what I mean is, think about how many times in Mario Kart 8. Jesus, what the hell happened to Bowser? How is he a lap behind? Uh, but think about how many times in Mario Kart 8 the game combines, uses anti-gravity to transition between various different states, we'll put it, like the underwater and gliding state. Like, think about Water Park. Water Park, you go underwater, you switch to anti-gravity and immediately leave the water. Uh, you go back underwater, still in anti-gravity, you leave anti-gravity, you transition from, like, water to flying at the same... You leave the water and you start gliding at about the same time. It seems like the game constantly, like, is using its different features, like, two at a time, for lack of a better term, and, like, using them as, like, transitions between different gimmicks. Uh... Very often you'll encounter, like, gliding used as an exit to an anti-gravity section. Anti-gravity is a transition through a water section. Uh, like, water transitioning out of a water section using a glide ramp, such as in uh, Wari DS Warrior Stadium. I don't know. The game just has, I feel, far and away the best track design um, overall. And I think part of that is also just not just its new tracks, but also the way they really bumped up the quality of old tracks in Mario Kart 8. Like, literally, DS Wario Stadium was, like, pretty good in Mario Kart DS. I honestly think it's my second favorite track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Because, like, just everything that they... The physics they applied for that game, the trick system, the way the anti-gravity is used to, like, mix things up. That get, that course has perfect pacing, in my opinion. And it just feels like a thrill ride. And I love it. And a lot of the tracks in this game are like that. Um, <laughs> except, <laughs> I feel like I keep praising the game, but then I realize uh, we're kind of... Ironically, these two tracks in a row are two of my least favorite uh, Wii U tracks. Um, Mario Circuit, um, I will say, uh, I believe this is by the gaming Bram, um, again, yes. Uh, so, this one is particularly interesting because it should not work in, without anti-gravity, because it's a giant eight, but it's also a Mobius loop track. Um, and the way he got around it with the second version of his Mario circuit here is, I feel, ingenious. So, like, the beginning of this track is pretty much the same. Here, it's still pretty much the same. Here's where things get different. Because we're turning to the left, like in the original track, but we're not going up. We're actually going down, and we actually turn further than we originally did in the actual track. And so now we're turning right after the straightaway, just like in the original track. And then we have a little left bend, like in the original track. And then a right turn to finish the circuit, like in the original track. So you have basically all of the original tracks. Actually, I just realized it's not coming across as well because you can't see the mini map. God damn it. Basically, you have all of the original version of this track's turns accounted for, but twisted in such a way that it's not, it's like, how do I put this? Basically, the track still forms a figure eight when viewed from above. With all the changes that he made. But he twists and it still features all of the turns and all of the correct order as the original track. 
but it, they're all bent slightly so that it doesn't actually follow the original track's route, but still gets the point across of being like a giant eight, even without the Mobius feature. And I think that's really ingenious. I think that's really cool. Now, in Mario Kart 8, this is not my favorite Mario Circuit. Uh, it's kind of one of my least... I don't... I mean, truth be told, I don't think any of at least the base Mario Kart 8 vanilla tracks are bad. Um, DLC uh, changed that um, because they added what might be my least favorite course in Mario Kart history in the form of Excite Bike Arena. Um... But the vanilla game, I feel like all of the new tracks were pretty good. Obviously, there's some modeling errors I just noticed there. Where the shoulder of the road doesn't really match up with the grass. Um, but yeah, I just really like the track design in Mario Kart 8 overall. Obviously, there's only so many ways I could say it. Uh, I just think my problem with this Mario Circuit in Mario Kart 8 is that it feels a little repetitive. It kind of feels like you end up doing six laps instead of three. Um, just because of the nature of the track. Like, it feels like you do a lap and then you do a, that same lap in mirror mode. But that's just the way it's designed. Uh, I get that they wanted to do the little late. It's fine. It's just not anything super special. Uh, Twisted Mansion. This might... I like Twisted Mansion in the vanilla game. I liked it a little more in the game release than later on. For some reason, I didn't feel like it aged particularly well, and I don't really know why. Uh, this version, I believe, is by the Gaming Brom as well. Um, I don't really particularly like this iteration of it here. Um, yeah, I just... Basically, some of these tracks are here because there were like 10 Wii U tracks that I wanted to have in the pack. And so I had to fill, like, two remaining slots with the most okay tracks I could find. And this one was the last on the chopping block to make the cut. Because um, this underwater portion is just very ugly. Um, but speaking of that underwater portion, that is my least favorite part. And my one real problem with this course in actual Mario Kart 8... It's like, I really like every part of this course that is not in that underwater tunnel, but so much of that track is in that underwater tunnel. And it's just like, is this Twisted Mansion or is it Twisted Sewer? Like, what the hell are we doing? Also, I feel like this version's really missing the giant, like, face in the floor. Except it's not actually in the floor because there's no anti-gravity. Um, I always thought that face looked a lot I don't know if it's intentional or not. Maybe it is. I always thought it looked a lot like Bouldergeist from uh, Mario Galaxy. The giant rock ghost, in other words. Um, but yeah, I also don't... There, I don't know if there's actually a way to get to the upper route in this version of this track. Um, I'm guessing it's probably only there because it was there in the original, even though I can't reach it. Maybe if you have, like, a perfect mushroom off of the fountain trick ramp, uh, then it would work. But I'm guessing that's not the case. Maybe Luigi's right on my ass right now. Uh oh Good. Maybe Luigi got super fucked by that. Okay. Oh, no, that's not good. That was karma for me saying they were Luigi got screwed by that. I don't want to risk going under that. Oh, go, 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 go. Okay, we're good. Yeah, we had plenty of time before the blue shell hit. Um, but yeah, Twisted Mansion. Uh, I just think... I see a lot of people, though. Like, I like this course quite a bit. And I think if it were in any other Mario Kart... Obviously, a little more polished than this. People would absolutely love it. I do feel like sometimes I see people complain about courses in Mario Kart 8 in a way that almost makes me think that it's like either they're just too used to them 
or what well, I don't know. Like when this game came out, I have obviously played these as they came out since basically. Super I mean, I wasn't there on day one of Super Mario Kart because I was like one. Um, but I remember playing Super Mario Kart before Mario Kart 64. Um, so, and I feel like when this game came out, I just watched, like, <laughs> I was a man, okay? I was in my 20s. And I still felt like a kid again watching some of these courses. Uh, particularly, oh, I actually just realized I forgot to talk about... Uh, Toad Harbor. Toad Harbor, I feel like, is a really, really fun city course. I feel like it's a better version of Dolphin, or not Dolphin Shoals, uh, Delfino Square. Um, but particularly when I f this game was first coming out and I saw footage of Shy Guy Falls, I was just like, holy shit, that is such a cool idea for a goddamn track, racing up a waterfall and then doing a hairpin turn and then racing down a waterfall. I just feel like every course is like so many turns and so many trick ramps and it just constantly feels like you're doing something in most of these tracks to the point that like nitpicky issues for me like Twisted Mansion has a section where you kind of just go down a straightaway and not much happens like when I really go back and play like Mario Kart Wii a ton of Mario Kart Wii tracks have that problem like I basically, basically, I realized in the course that made me realize it. I, I don't think it's actually next. Um, we'll get to it in a sec. This remake of Dolphin Shoals. Uh, Dolphin Shoals. We'll we'll get to Shun Sunshine Airport. Cause Sunshine Airport. I fucking love Sunshine Airport. Um, but it just fits more with what I'm talking about right now. This remake of Dolphin Shoals is so good that it made me realize how much I love Mario Kart Eight. Because Dolphin Shoals, yeah, I'd consider it in the bottom half of the made for Mario Kart 8 tracks. Like, the Wii U tracks in terms of quality in Mario Kart 8. And yet, this version is a really good port of that. And it has, like, all the same properties. And I realize I would rather play it than a majority of Mario Kart Wii tracks... Even though it's one of the weakest Mario Kart 8 tracks. And it kind of just made me realize, like, god damn, Mario Kart 8 has so many good fucking tracks that, like, this is a track that I'm considering, like, eh, it's okay. Like, it's it's probably better than okay if it were in any other Mario Kart game. Um, but before we get to that point, let's go to Sunshine Airport. Uh, Sunshine Airport is Mario Kart 8 for me. One of those tracks that I probably... Like, I think it might be a top five track for me in Mario Kart 8. And I can't really explain why. It just has a good flow to it that I love playing. Uh, and I just realized I forgot to check who made this version, but I believe it was Diego Vapi. Vapi? Vapi? I don't know how to say it. And this is running like shit right now. Uh, I hope it's running better for you than it is for me. And I hope you can still hear me. Uh, yeah, but this is one of those where I think he first released this port, and I checked it out for inclusion in my pack here, uh, and I denied it because I thought it was not very good at all. Um, but it's gotten better with this iteration. My big problem is, you can see this section, there's, like, for some reason, every single triangle is just colored differently and weirdly. And also, this course just doesn't work as well in Mario Kart Wii, because no glider at the end kind of hurts it um but i just really like the pace of this course i really like the music uh i love the airport theme in fact as a kid i would always design my own mario kart tracks on paper uh and i would frequently use an airport as a theme and i'm kind of sad that it took us this long to get one uh but i think that what they did is very clever i love this like turn on the wing of this aircraft that I'm going to completely botch right now. Uh, the fact that you take off and land. Well, you take off from a runway. You don't technically land on the runway, but I mean, it gets the idea across. Oh. But yeah, no, I just think this course is just really fun.
I will say, uh, not that I expect it from these ports, but I, I do kind of miss the fact that the little subtle touch that's in the one in Mario Kart 8 of the different airport, the uh, airport announcements when you're actually in the terminal. Those are fun. And, I mean, obviously I miss a lot of the, like, the plane taking off right over your head or landing. Like, as you're trying to land and shit. This course is just cool. The only thing I don't like about this course really is this anti-gravity portion. I get, I get why it's there, because you need to have... If you have to have your airplane take off and land... You have to have some way to get from taking off to landing. <laughs> and there's no way to do that without having just like a giant thing in the sky. Maybe if there were a control tower like on up here, which wouldn't really make sense for an airport. Like you would drive around the control tower at the top. That might have been cool. But also it would have meant that the airport planes were basically taking off right at the control tower, which sounds horribly dangerous and wrong. Um, But it is Mario Kart, so who really cares? Um, But yeah. That's, it's a fine remake, but again, a lot of these are, as I said at the beginning, <laughs> we have Mario Kart 8 at home, Mario Kart 8 at home. Uh, however, this remake of Dolphin Shoals is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the, just in terms of execution, one of the better custom tracks out there. Uh, in, of all custom tracks. Because they really, uh, it's by Mr. Fluffy. I unfortunately looked away from his name during all that. Um, it really just gets the vibe of this course perfect. Uh, it doesn't have the changing music, or at least the way I've implemented it, it doesn't. But it does have the dolphins. It does have all the trick cramps and everything. It got, like, some of the shadow effects. Obviously, it's missing a bunch of detail. Like, I'm not going to pretend that it's a perfect reiteration of this course and this uh i mean the fact that that eel works at all is great even though it's in like chunks and like i was trying to look down at the whirlpool as i was driving but it kind of just caused me to lose control and drive into the whirlpool um the way he implemented uh even though i just Jesus, get fucked, Rosalina. Um, the way he implemented... I, I'm a big sucker for when people take the glide ramps in these backboards and actually, like, do something about them when they're removed and aren't just a cannon. Uh, and he added a little platform, which we'll hopefully see this time because I won't just drive straight off the road which is apparently what's happening to Waluigi and Shy Guy. Uh, but yeah, like the original track, this would be a glide ramp here, but he added a little, another platform with the trick ramp, so it's a lot more natural. That's the kind of stuff that I love seeing in these kinds of ports. I guess the only problem I would have with this version um, is that it's missing a little bit of color toward the end of the track. Um, but obviously there's only so many details you can put in when you're limited by the number of polygons. Uh, because this isn't a Wii U, it's a Wii. Well, technically this isn't a Wii, it's a computer right now, but you know what I mean. I mean, it gets the idea of the track cross. Apparently there is issues with the UI, or of the AI on this track, but beyond that, I'll do one last attempt to look down there. Okay, that was a little better. But yeah, that feels pretty much spot on for how this track plays. And is probably, in my opinion, the best uh, Mario Kart 8 D make out of any of them. Because um, it really nails like the feel of the track and everything. Uh, there was, was there a Flower Cup track I forgot to talk about? No, I talked about all of them. Electrodrome. Um, I feel like I should like this track more than I do. And I don't mean this port of it. I mean it in Mario Kart 8. 
Um, I do really like this track, Mario Kart 8. But it feels like a lot of people just love it. And I'm a sucker for gravity shenanigans. This supports by Squire Turnbolt, by the way. Um, I'm a sucker for gravity shenanigans. That's like what this course is all about. But I don't know. I think the problem I have with it is the really, really long, like, straightaway. Uh, I mean, they added... Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world because the good thing about... One of the things that I really like about Mario Kart 8 is even when there is a long straightaway, they add, like, anti-gravity boosters and trick opportunities all the way. And that's what they did for the long straightaway. In this course... Um, but... It still is just... I prefer to have a course with more turns. And I feel like the anti-gravity portion... Actually, I think one of my problems with this track is the music. Um, it's kind of got the same issue I talked about with Music Park, where for a course based around music, it kind of doesn't have very memorable music to me. And I feel like the music should be better. Um, but it's still a cool track. I love all the visual effects that are on the carts when you're driving around and stuff. Giant disco ball. I'm going to go to the top route to see what's going on. Um, but yeah, but this remake does a great job of recreating the track without anti-gravity, despite that being the track's, like, main purpose. And does a good job of downporting the track overall. Also, there's perfect timing on that pile, so I didn't have to dodge anything. I'm just taking a look around, kind of, scenery as I go. Because... For a lot of these tracks, I don't know if I've even said, I've practiced, I've tested them to make sure they work off stream or outside of VR, but I've never played them in VR, um, which is a big reason I set all this up. So, and it also allows me to appreciate things like how many buildings are up there because you normally just don't really get to see that during normal play or like those speakers up there, I get a better sense of where they are. But yeah, uh, a very nice port. It's one of the top ports, back ports, I'd say, for the Wii U. Probably my second favorite back port. Uh, maybe. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it's up there. Unfortunately, we gotta talk about the elephant in the room. There's no Mount Wario. There is a port of Mount Wario back to this, but I just didn't think it was very good. But I gotta talk about Mount Wario, because holy fucking shit Mount Wario. Um, Mount Wario is the best... In my opinion, Mount Wario is one of the best video game levels ever made. Not just Mario Kart tracks, one of the best video game levels ever made. Uh, every time I think about making, like, what would I do to make a new, like, snow or ice track in like, say, Mario Kart 8? And I realized there's nothing I can do because everything I think about was done in Mount Wario because it did all the ideas. Like, honestly, Mount Wario to me feels like it was backported to Mario Kart 8 from Mario Kart 9 because it feels so much more overly designed than every other course in the game. In terms of, like, visual variety, in terms of the music constantly changing, it is everything you could possibly want out of an A to B course in the game. And it's a simple idea of just get from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain. But it throws everything at you the entire way down the track. And it is just a joy. And the fact... You start the goddamn course by jumping out the back of a helicopter. And it's time to the music. Like, fuck, man. <laughs> that course is so good. Uh, that course... Oh, God. Just everything about that course is just a joy. I, I do wish the music were a little more memorable, but it is also timed to what's happening, and so that, I think, makes up for it. Um, but yeah, Mount Wario. Obviously not backported. I'm honestly not sure I'd want to see it backported, because I feel like it would just be a weird compromise for how... You don't have a lot of polygons to work with in Mario Kart Wii, and there'd be a lot of shit to cover, or a lot of ground to cover. Uh, anyways, we're moving on technically to the special cup, in air quotes, uh, with Cloudtop Cruise. 
I believe this is by Diego Vapi or Vapi. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. Of course, it's a little weird. Oh, you don't see it yet. Um, I believe the way I don't. I'm not 100% sure, but like the way the lightning bolts, you'll see they work very weirdly. Um, but yeah, this course, I, this is another course that, don't get me wrong, I do like it. Because again, I like, I genuinely like most courses in Mario Kart Wii. Or, Jesus, Mario Kart 8. Um, I'm getting some lag all of a sudden. Um, but, I do feel like this course should not be in the special cup. <laughs> now you can't see the goofy lightning. <laughs> it, it it just does not work um, the way you'd want it to. Um, but I feel like it. I would like this course if it were like the end of the Flower Cup. It just doesn't feel like there's enough going on to be in the Special Cup. Also, that shortcut, I just have not figured out Mario Kart Wii yet. I can nail that shortcut like 99 times out of 100 in, in Mario Kart 8, but this version I just can't figure out the physics on it. So I'm probably not going to attempt it again. Especially since I don't have that many opportunities to catch up now that I've botched it. I suppose that is something you could say is a problem with this course, is that there's no uh, good shortcut opportunities besides that one, and you can take that one in first place. And if anything, that one's more effective in first place. Because you can trap it. Oh, God damn. It's starting to get quiet, because now this race is starting to get serious. Uh, but yeah, no, I like this course. Uh, I'm a sucker for... I think uh, Gusty Garden is absolutely one of the best video game pieces of music ever written. So the fact that they got Gusty Garden into this game only further enhances uh, Mario Kart 8's greatness. Now we're hitting them. Yeah. Holy. Okay. That was close. Part of me regrets not just like yoloing and going for that fucking shortcut right at the end. But part of me also regrets just using the phrase YOLO just now because I hate it. Um, but yeah, no. It's. This plays better than I think it looks this particular iteration of it, it's recognizably um, Cloud Top Cruise. Obviously, the Thunder Cloud section is just really weird. It's kind of hard to tell where the thunder, the lightning's going to hit, and the lightning's just goofy looking. Um, but, I mean, it, it's a fine enough port. Uh, oh, except I don't really like the way the thunder like flashes in the clouds there. It's kind of charring looking. Um, but yeah, so we've really only got... Four tracks left that have been ported. Um, but we do have most of the special cup here. So let's continue on with uh, Bone Dry Dunes. I really like this course. <laughs> and that is a very unpopular opinion, I know. And honestly, I don't know why it's a very unpopular opinion, because I just think this course is fun. And the only thing I can really think of is one of two things. One is literally, quite literally, and I hate to say it, a uh, skill issue. Um, because this course is pretty hard. Like, it deserves to be in the special cup, I think. Um, but the other thing is... I don't know if it's because in Mario Kart 8, and I know this is uncommon, but I use sport bikes. Also, I'm just a little too trusting of that. Uh, Piranha Plant, because I can get away with it in Mario Kart 8, and I can't here. 
Um, but... Uh... Where was... What, what the hell was I talking about before that printer plant bit me? Oh. I use sport bikes, and I think this course plays really well with sport bikes. And so I kind of wonder if it's just a matter of people using all the normal carts, and maybe this course just doesn't play very well with normal carts. Or it's possible that something about this course just jives me. Because it feels like whenever I get this course, like, I know the AI isn't very good in Mario Kart 8, but I can just demolish the hard AI in Mario Kart 8 on this course. Like, it's not even a question that I will win against the AI in this course. Um, if I would point out a problem with, uh... This course in Mario Kart 8, it's that uh, the split road back there. Unless I am completely wrong and have been wrong for the nine years that this game's been out, the right hand path just feels like. Jesus Christ, that shell had a fucking. like, had blood out from here. I don't know what I'm saying. Out for blood. There we go. Um, but yeah, uh, unless I've just been doing everything wrong all these years, the right-hand path here may as well be the only path as far as I can tell because it feels way, 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 way faster in Mario Kart 8 than ever going the left path to the point that it's a question as to why the left path even exists. But now that I've said that, part of me is also wondering if I'm, like, an idiot. And it turns out the left path has been faster all along. In which case, I feel like I'll probably never lose a race again if I, <laughs> I were to find that out about this track. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a very, very good port of this track. Um, one of the better back ports from Mario Kart 8. Um, unfortunately, we have no Bowser's Castle um, to work with. Uh, I've kind of talked about it in a past episode. Um, Mario Kart 8's Bowser Castle, Bowser's Castle would be my favorite if not for the giant, like, Olam Bowser section. Because I feel like the course up to that point has absolute kick-ass pacing. And then you reach that part. And after you get past the giant Bowser, there's like a really long, drawn-out turn. And, I don't know, it just feels like the pacing of the course just dies. Um, so I still like Mario Kart Wii's Bowser's Castle a little bit more. But it's probably my second favorite one. Uh, Wii U Rainbow Road. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that Bone Dry Dunes is by Luca. Uh, this is by me. Hi. Um finally have reached a second course that I have made in this pack. Uh, I feel like this course gets more shit than it deserves in Mario Kart 8. Um, a lot of people I remember saying, like, it's easy. And I don't fucking know what course they're playing, because I feel like the beginning figure 8 in Mario Kart 8... Jesus, fuck, I don't know. Um, I feel like the beginning figure 8 in Mario Kart 8 is an absolute ass kicker. Because if you bump... Well, I will say, again, I play uh, sport bikes. And it is worse with sport bikes than it is with regular bikes. Or with any other vehicle. Because you have to tap the brakes. Uh, even on 150cc if you get a purple boost. Uh, I'm just going to go different ways here. Uh, but the shortcut is still in this version. Um, but yeah... Like, it is, I feel like that turn, especially in 200cc, is brutal. I feel like this last turn is deceptively difficult, because if you're in a wrong vehicle and you're not drifting quite well, you can get thrown off to the outside edge pretty easily. Um, I really just wish that this course had a little better music, but honestly, it's probably my third favorite Rainbow Road. Uh... It was, for a while, the best Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, until they added the one from 7, and the one from 7 kind of ran away with that. 
Um, anyways, this particular version, as I said, was made by me. Uh, it was an absolute pain in the ass to do. Uh, but really, I just wanted to use it to practice kind of rebuilding an entire Mario Kart 8 course from scratch instead of trying to, like, back, like downscale the existing model uh, and to still get the point across the track while making it fit more with Mario Kart 8 or with Mario Kart Wii. Uh, I feel like I kind of... This opening figure 8 was an absolute pain in the ass to make and I feel like it still doesn't really get the point across from the original track. Um, and... It's one of the reasons I grew to kind of get frustrated with making tracks for Mario Kart Wii. Um, because basically I wanted it to work with every vehicle. And the Phantom and other terrible turning carts. Just I kept having to edit that turn because they could not make that turn. But bikes such as the Bowser bike, that turn is trivial. And so it kind of just sucks and it isn't very entertaining. Um... I will say, I think I made more changes here than I think people realize to get this to work with Mario Kart Wii, because I didn't even realize it until I started working on this track that, uh, and I'm probably going to let some of this play here instead of just moving right on. Um, one thing I didn't realize is you see that turn over there way in the distance, like the beginning of the split road and stuff? What I didn't realize is in Mario Kart 8, like, that entire section is completely vertical. And it the course really twists as it heads down the home stretch to where the two split roads is merged back together. And you really don't get that sense when you're actually playing the course. And so it took a lot of finagling for me to, like, maintain the sort of layout of the original track while also not having it twist as much as the original track because it didn't need to twist at like a 90 degree angle from where you start that section to where you end it like the original did. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of technical challenges with making this course, uh, texturing the road. The split road was an absolute nightmare. Um, technically the road course is still broken, still doesn't have a lot of the colors and shit that I wanted to add because I kind of just got fucking sick of working on it um because it took way longer than i thought it would i'm still overall kind of happy with how it turned out because i think it's still recognizably wii u rainbow road and at the time i would say it was probably the second best uh the second best backport from eight into wii uh, i feel like that has now been passed by several other courses that i have previously mentioned um also, I never really fixed how the enemy AI works, so often you'll have an enemy just fall off the track back here and stay off the track, although it doesn't... I don't think it's happened this race. I don't see any of them back there. Um, but anyways, that's enough blabbering for me about that track. Next up is Wildwoods. Um, obviously, we skipped a few tracks here. I don't think there's a particularly good version of any of the F-Zero tracks. I don't think there's a particularly good version of Hyrule Circuit out there currently for Mario Kart Wii. I could be wrong, but as far as I checked, there wasn't. Um, which is a shame, because the F-Zero tracks are some of the best tracks in the game. I really like Hyrule Circuit. I really like uh, Dragon Driftway. Uh, I really hate Excite Bike Arena, um, <laughs> as I've kind of already talked about. Of course, I think it's just boring as fuck and is a more boring version of Baby Park. But I think Baby Park is at least entertaining, whereas that one is not. Um, uh, what other non-retros am I missing here? Uh, Ice Ice Outpost is... Uh, a track that certainly exists in Mario Kart 8 uh, that I have no strong opinions on whatsoever. Um, I think that covers all of the new tracks leading up to this one. Obviously, this one is... Uh, this one... There's a lot of adaptation going on with this one, um, which I believe it was by the Gaming Brom, by, or Bram, 
I didn't tell. I feel like he's been getting better with some of these courses at realizing, like, you can't just, like, lower the poly count of the existing model and have it work. You have to make changes to the course in order for it to work in this game. And, boy, does this course have a lot of changes. Um, but it works. Uh, obviously, the starting line in the original course was completely vertical and going up a tree. Here, you're kind of, like, just going on a side branch... And then instead of branches, these are a bridge leading up to the branch of this main tree. Uh, which doesn't really look like a main tree from this angle, but also the camera in the actual game would never really get that good of an angle at it. Um, here, I don't like the pit that's on the left side there. I know it's in the original, but it's like kind of a blind pit. Depending on how you exit that split path back there. This trick ramp is perfectly placed to not require... A cannon to sort of replace the glide ramp. But yeah, no, this is definitely recognizably uh, Wild Woods. Although I do feel like maybe it could be darker in here to get the like point across. But yeah, uh, you can look up, you can see the trees. Obviously, you're never really meant to because the camera's probably not going to look up that high, but I can, so damn it, I'm going to do it. I will say the original version of this track in Mario Kart 8, I think, has a lot of just fun details. Like, there's the fact that there's, like, an actual... If you actually pay attention, there's, like, an elevator system to get people from the village that's at the bottom of the tree up to where the starting line is. Uh, stuff like that. Um, I do like this course in the original game. I love the music. Um, it's not one of my favorites, but it's definitely a fun course. Uh, and... I feel like I always have a close race on it for some reason. Um, but yeah, uh, let me just briefly think here. Uh, other vanilla Mario Kart 8 courses. I'm, I should note that I'm specifically talking about Wii U Mario Kart 8 when I say Mario Kart 8 courses and not the booster pass. We'll talk about that at a later date here. Um, I guess the only other one that I can remember off the top of my head is Super Bell Subway, which again, I absolutely love. I think that is a very underrated track. Um, I would, I think I talked about it in a previous episode. If you count that as a traffic course, because it kind of is, because you're like dodging traffic, it's just train traffic instead of car traffic. Um, I think it's the best traffic course. Uh, I just really love it. I think there's a lot of fun, like drifting. There's a lot of fun alternate routes and shit. Um, it's a lot of alternate routes. All the alternate routes are, like, safer, but they're slower where you can get on top of the train. It's just really dynamic and interesting course, I think. Animal Crossing. Uh, I actually haven't played Animal Crossing. The game, not the course. I've played the course. Um, so I don't really have much emotional attachment to this course, but I feel like I am cursed with this course where I always get... I am always just fighting for my life on this course in Mario Kart 8. Like, I, this, if I'm going to get blown up by, like, six red shells, or six blue shells in a single race in Mario Kart 8 on any course, it's this one. Uh, this version is by ZPL. Um, and we have gotten Autumn, which leads me to pointing out that much like the original course, uh, I do have it set up here to randomize which one is selected when we pick the course. So we have gotten Autumn. Thank God it's not winter. The winter version of this track can absolutely kiss my ass. Also, the music is very, very quiet, apparently. I really wish there were a better way for me to like equalize a lot of the volume of these tracks. Because I kind of have to manually go through each of them and do it. Um, which is why some of them are so quiet. I will say the one thing I never really understand, and I feel like ZPL does this a lot with us, is his tracks, it feels like he adds, like, some background details that weren't there in the original. They're, like, weird. Like, there's often too many of them. Like, there's a lot of cliffs out by the ocean in this version. And I kind of like that it was, like, a wide-open ocean in the original. You know what I mean? I don't know. Obviously, it's his prerogative to do whatever he wants. Uh, I will say I just now noticed... Which, honestly, I don't even think I realized existed in the original track. Um, until I really had to look at it when I started modding Mario Kart 8 for, like, extra references. 
the fact that there's like an absolutely massive tree in the middle of this pack in the original, uh, in the middle of this track, like right where I'm looking, there's like a giant tree in the original. Which is weird, because as far as I know, nothing like that exists in Animal Crossing, but again, I don't really play Animal Crossing. Um, but yeah, this is definitely not one of my favorite courses in Mario Kart 8. Um, not that I dislike it. It's more just kind of a personal vendetta against it, because it seems to just hate me for some reason. Uh, but yeah, uh, I believe we're quickly approaching the end here of the race, and that is actually the end of the Mario Kart 8 tracks that I have in Mario Kart Wii. Um, obviously this episode's a little weird. Um, a lot of these tracks, I mean, a lot of them are uncanny valley, sort of. They're just not quite right. Um, they weren't really designed for Mario Kart Wii after all. Um, but I'd feel wrong if I didn't include them. Uh, especially stuff like when you got ports that are as good as uh, the Dolphin Shoals one or like Bone Dry Dunes. Of course I'm going to include them because this is sort of Mario Kart Wii Mix is sort of a race through Mario Kart history in a way. Um, but look at that happy boy. He's so happy and he just licked my face by accident. Um, so yeah, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Fantastic game. Uh, I think truly, truly the best in the series by a good while. Uh, so before I leave you, um, I am kind of just going to go over some of the weirdness here that's going to be coming up with the... Uh, next up is Tour. Now, I'm sure... Well... Somebody isn't typing this because nobody's fucking watching this. But if somebody were watch, if a bunch of people were watching this, somebody would be typing up the age-old thing of Tour's not one of the mainline Mario Kart games. Why is it included? And then somebody else is typing up Tour isn't or Tour is one of the main time Mario games. Everyone's just sad and doesn't want to count it because it's a mobile game. Uh, and then a third person is typing up where are all the arcade tracks. Um. My standpoint on the Mario Kart Tour tracks is shut up. Um, my second standpoint is I don't really care if it is or isn't Mario considered Mario Kart 9 because it's going to make literally no difference to the reality of the situation that the game exists. The only difference that could possibly happen is the next Mario Kart game could be called Mario Kart 9 and it could be called Mario Kart 10. It's literally just a number on a box, people. Um, anyways, it'll be next because I feel like it's got more Nintendo involvement than the arcade tracks. Also, I think the arcade games suck, but that's a whole other story. Um, so I've decided to include Tour. Uh, I've decided to do it a little bit weirdly. Uh, I should note that I am running a version of this pack that is not publicly available yet. Um, the publicly available one actually only has eight Wii U tracks right now, and I decided to shove four more in once I saw Wild Woods and Cloud Top Cruise and some of these other ones that I thought I might as well just include. Um, but yeah, the tour tracks, it's going to include a variety of the remix stuff. It's going to include at least one. I'm trying to limit the city tracks down to one each. Um, but the real reason I'm bringing this up is it's got, currently got five cups in this iteration. One of the cups is actually some GBA tracks again, because I feel like enough changes were made to some of the GBA tracks that I wanted to keep it separate than the actual GBA tracks. And this is a long-winded me of, way of me saying I wanted to keep my Sky Garden in, <laughs> my GBA Sky Garden in, while also acknowledging that there's a different version of Sky Garden that is officially Nintendo. Um, and also, somebody is probably also going to be upset about the fact that I am considering Sky High Sunday and Yoshi's Island Tour Tracks. Uh, because they kind of are, because they were developed for both Tour and Mario Kart 8. And also, it's just going to be easier for me to organize this goddamn pack if I don't have two random-ass tracks that say Switch in front of them. 
Uh, but yeah, that'll be next time covering all these tour tracks. I don't know if I'm going to divide it between the tour tracks and then just throw this cup into its own thing or what. And then we'll finally be into the actual custom custom tracks. Uh, but that'll, that's for the future. Thank you very much for watching. Happy nine years of Mario Kart 8 on Wii U. Uh, I guess gone but not forgotten because really everyone's moved on to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, but I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.